and welcome back to Start a Business. We're at Module 4, which is all about attracting and retaining customers. The unit standard we're dealing with right now is apply the basic skills of customer service, unit standard 114974. So there's two basic customer types. There's an internal customer and there's an external customer. An internal customer might be somebody that you work with inside your offices. Someone you might owe information to or has asked you to do something. Whereas an external customer is somebody you sell your products and services to. So external customers can be divided into two categories as well. You can get industrial customers and consumer customers. Industrial customers might be those who would buy a tractor or a photocopying machine or stationery from you. Whereas a consumer customer might buy a bottle of perfume from you or an ice cream from you. You're in direct contact with them and your marketing strategy has to be different too. So a customer buys products from us. And one of the biggest things to remember is that we must never argue with a customer. The customer is king. What he says goes. And you'll be surprised how much you can learn by listening to a customer and hearing what he wants to have and what he wants you to serve him with. Bear in mind also, a customer is not dependent on us in any way. We're dependent on the customer. Without a customer, we don't have a business. We wouldn't sell products and we wouldn't make profit. And profit is what our business is all about. So we'd like to have people in our business who are dealing with customers to have good people skills. Good people skills would be things where somebody would be kind to a customer, would listen to a customer, would try to understand the needs of a customer. It's important to be sympathetic and empathetic with a customer, to try to understand where they're coming from and what they'd like out of our product or service. Bear in mind that better services means better profits and that is what our business is all about. So let's just have a look on the screen for a second here about the main points to good customer service. We want to answer the telephone with a smile. Always keep your promises with the customer. If you say you're going to do something today, make sure you get it done. And if you can't for whatever reason not get it done, then phone the customer and tell them and explain why you were unable to get it done. Always listen to what your customer has to say. Hear clearly what he's asking of you. Do not try to push a sale down the customer's throat. Listen carefully to the customer's words. Deal with complaints quickly and calmly. Make sure that the customer understands that you're catering and gearing up for his needs. Train your staff to be helpful people, to go the extra mile for your customer. It's important that your customer feels that they're the most important person in your business at that point in time. Another thing to remember is always to do something extra. Do something the customer is not expecting you to do. Do something that the customer would have thought would have been out of your way. That way you'll make the customer feel like they're king and that you're really servicing them. When talking to a customer, make sure you always focus your entire attention on the customer. Make good eye contact with the customer. Listen attentively and show your body language to be open and sincere towards the customer's needs. One thing I always remember is to try to remember the customer's name. A name to a person is the most important sound they've ever heard. Just remember that. Remember the customer's name. Points to remember about bad customer service. No eating or chewing or smoking when you're dealing with a customer. Don't carry on your private telephone calls when the customer comes along towards you. Make sure you put the telephone down quickly when the customer arrives. Never continue with your paperwork with your head down. Remember, the customer is the most important person in your life. And do not be defensive or blame the customer for anything that may have gone wrong. Accept the blame yourself and try to fix the situation as soon and as quickly as you possibly can. Here's a case study for you. How do you know your customer is satisfied? Okay, it's the pump attendant story. Think of this for a second. You're the pump attendant at a petrol station. The customer has arrived and asked you to fill his car up with petrol. You do so and wash the windscreen at the same time. After you've finished the servicing of your customer, you go to the customer with the bill and he pays you and he tips you. He tips you five rand. But how do you know your customer is satisfied with your service? How do you know you've done everything you can for the customer? Well, that's the question, isn't it, really? How do you really know? Well, one of the pump attendants I dealt with once said, well, the customer waves at me. Hmm. Well, he could be waving at a friend down the road. He wouldn't know for sure. He says, the customer tipped me. So I said, yes, but he tipped you five rand, but he tipped the other guy 10 rand just up the road, the next petrol station. 
So how do you really know that the customer is satisfied? It's worth thinking about, isn't it? And the answer to that question is, ask the customer. Is there anything else I can do for you, sir? Are you satisfied with your windscreen? Is your petrol tank full to the brim? Is there anything else I can do? Maybe check your tires. No, thank you, says the customer. That's perfectly fine. And he's on his way, a satisfied customer. Interacting with customers, and this is very important. And when I was in real estate, they taught me one thing. You have two ears and one mouth, and you should use it in the same proportion that you were given them. Listen twice as hard as you talk. Because talking may sound like selling, but listening is really doing the selling. Always maintain a positive body language. Smile at the customer. Make them feel welcome. Have an open body language. And as I said, listen carefully with both ears to hear what the customer is really asking of you. Never be aggressive with the customer. Always bear in mind that he is king. If we get aggressive with the customer, we're likely to push him away. And if we do, we won't have a sale and we won't have profits coming our way. Also, one thing to remember, there'll be times when you won't be the right person to talk to about a customer's problem. The problem is a little bit bigger than your superiority. You would have to escalate such a problem up to your supervisor. For example, the customer may wish to have a product returned or may be dissatisfied with the way the service has been handled. You may not be in a position at that point in time to help your customer. Calmly tell the customer that you're going to escalate the problem up to your supervisor. That way, the solution will be found. So let's just try to understand interactive listening skills. They're coming up on your screen right now. Look at the person squarely in the eyes when you're talking at them. Open your posture. Be positive about how you're talking to the person. Lean towards the customer as if you're attentive to show your attention. Make sure that your eye contact is maintained with the customer. Don't look down or sideways. Keep an eye contact carefully on the customer's eyes. And then relax when attending to the customer. Bear in mind you've got the information that the customer is trying to get. You're the person that the customer is asking questions of and you're the one who's going to be able to satisfy your customer. Another way to ensure that you understand the customer's needs carefully is to paraphrase the customer. For example, do I really understand then, sir, that what you're looking for is to return this product? You don't want another product, you'd like to return it. You're not happy at all. Or it could be a case of, so you're not liking the red color, sir. Would you prefer the green? Am I understanding correctly that green is your preferred color? Let's try to understand why we want to understand a customer's complaints. They're coming up on your screen again now. For example, if we understand complaints, we can remove the defects in our products. It helps us to improve the way we do things in our company, knowing that a customer may be dissatisfied with the way our process works. He may be able to give us a better way of understanding how to give customer service towards him as well. Or give us higher performance standards. If we don't understand what the customer expects of us, we wouldn't understand how to perform and what levels of performance the customer is expecting. Don't forget also, the customer, by telling us things, is helping us to improve the standards that we deliver. So, knowing about the defects or the complaints of the customer helps us to understand how to improve our service quality towards the customer for future customers. Also, complaints bring things out into the open. It helps us to understand where we've got defects, where there are problems with our product or our service. Knowing where they are helps us to fix them for future customers. And lastly, it helps us to reorganize our goals as an organization. If we understand where the customer is going with his thoughts and with his dissatisfaction with our products or services, we're able to better change our strategy, make our goals different, and therefore improve the way we're going as an organization. Okay, let's have a look at where the most common complaints exist. They are things like the customer's expectations aren't being met. He came into our store, he ordered a hot dog from us, and he expected to have tomato sauce and relish and mustard on top. And all we gave him was just a plain hot dog. So understanding his uh, expectations of us helps us to better understand what we could produce better for him next time. Another complaint type is where a customer has been treated badly. Okay, and in our business, you need to bear in mind that you may not be the only one giving customer service. You could have employees, and not all of them are delivering the same customer service that you do. 
So if a customer complains about bad customer service, you want to hear about it first because knowing who's giving the bad service helps you to retrain those people or to eliminate that in the future. A customer being ignored is one of the worst things ever. Don't you feel the same when you walk into a store, you've got this money to spend, you'd like to buy a new jacket, and you stand there and stand there and no one attends to you. You feel like a lost soul. What are you going to do? You stand, you feel ignored, and you walk out. There's a lost customer gone from that store. Another common complaint type is when a complaint is not dealt with. The customer feels like, wow, you don't even care if I exist within your business. You're not even prepared to listen to my complaint or do anything about it. What is that customer going to do? They're going to leave and walk out and not return again. Okay, so dealing with customer queries or complaints. One of the big things here is to clarify exactly what the complaint is. What is the complaint about from the customer's perspective? Is it the fact that he's bought a red jacket and would rather change it for a green one? Is it a complaint about the food tasting terrible or something like that? But whatever it is, you need to clarify from the customer exactly what the need is and what their complaint is all about. So clarification is about understanding exactly what the problem is. And you could do this by paraphrasing or by listening very carefully. So to paraphrase, you might say, let me understand carefully, sir. You're saying the food doesn't match the standard that you're expecting. Is it because it's not salty enough or are you expecting more chips? So to clarify the meaning from the customer is to understand carefully what he's really saying. You could paraphrase. So I understand, sir, that you're saying there's not enough chips on this plate or my meat is too underdone. That's paraphrasing. That's understanding exactly what the customer is saying to you. So therefore, you're able to fix the problem the customer is complaining about. So as I've said before, maintaining good body language is very important. Keeping open arms and a smile and eye contact with your customer helps the customer to know that you're attentive towards their problems. So as I've said before as well, never be aggressive and avoid confrontation. The customer is always right. Just bear that in mind. Try and find a way that you can help the customer to understand some of the policies that you have and also to adjust them so that you can ensure the customer feels satisfied when he walks away from your store or your shop. Another point to bear in mind is to go the extra mile. The customer would expect A, B or C out of you, but offer D and E. That's the difference between your company and another competing company. Your service levels will often determine whether your company succeeds at a greater level than any other competitor. So go the extra mile because it'll mean that your company will stand out from the competitors and your company will succeed over and above all the others. Also, remember to follow up. If you say to a customer that you'll get back to them by the end of the day with an answer to their query, make sure you do such a thing. Because a customer is waiting on the other end of the line hoping for your call to know the answer to their problem. So make sure you make the call, even if your call isn't a positive one, even if the customer may have to wait an extra day. Make sure you phone the customer and inform them about where you are with the product or the query that they've had. Just the other day I heard a lovely quote from Mahatma Gandhi, the great Indian leader. In order to find yourself, you have to lose yourself in the service of others. And finally a case study for you. I was once your customer. Picture this scene. You go into a restaurant. You sit there with your girlfriend waiting to be served a meal. You sit and you wait. The restaurant's busy. It's buzzy. There's lots going on. You can't wait to have the meal with your girlfriend. And you wait and you wait and you wait. And nothing comes. No service. No waitress. Everybody's busy around you and nothing seems to be happening. So what do you do? You look at her. You feel embarrassed, you can't understand why you can't attract a waitress's attention, and you feel even more embarrassed. So you quietly stand up and you walk out of that restaurant. No sale was made, no food served, no drinks made. So the restaurant made no sale, nothing. They didn't even know you existed. And the moral of this story, I was once your customer. I didn't complain, I just left quietly.